Hello and welcome to the Spectator and Chronicle full AQ paper in conjunction with Sterling Tuition. So the front sheet here just has your miles, it has the marks, this is the way it will be set out in the actual AQE where they will have the scores down the side and then on the side they'll have the percentages. It's an hour long so we'll get stuck straight in. Number one, look at the function machine below. So we've got number in times by four plus 35 and then our number out. So we need to put in the number in, which is 0 0.5, and then times that by 4. So 0 0.5 times by 4. So 0 0.5 is a fa half, effectively. So 4 halves makes 2, and then plus 35. The number that will come out will be 37. Now we've got the number that's come out here, 59. So we need to put it at out, and we need to go back through doing the opposite of everything, the inverse. And then we will get the number that goes in. So 59 take away 35 first. So 59 minus our 35 leaves us with 24. So we're 24 here. And then 24 divided by 4 will leave us with 6. So 37 and 6 to get the mark there. Number 2. Look at the four statements below. Tick to show whether each statement is true or false. So we've got an isosceles triangle has two angles of the same size. Yep, that's true. An equilateral triangle has angles are all 60 degrees. Yep, that's true. A rhombus has only one set of parallel sides. That's actually false because it's actually got two sets. It's got one set that way and it's also got the other set that way. So that is false. And then an acute angle is 90 degrees or less. Now this is a sneaky one on purpose because an acute angle cannot be 90 degrees because that's a right angle. Okay, so this one is in fact false because it's not 90 degrees or less. If it said here less than 90 degrees, it'd be true, but it says 90 degrees or less. So 90 degrees is a right angle, so that would be false. Number three, a drawer contains 19 pairs of blue socks and 19 individual red socks. How many socks are in the drawer altogether? So 19 pairs, so in one pair you get two socks. That's important to remember. So we need to double this up first because in one pair there's two socks and 19 pairs we'll need to do 2 times 19 which is 38 socks. Okay? And then you've got 19 individual. Individual just means one. So we'll need to do 38 added to the 19 and that will give us the total amount of socks altogether. So 8 add 9 gives us the 17. 3 add 1 add 1 gives me my 5. So it'll be 57 socks in total. Now this next question looks a little tricky. It takes up the whole page, but it says, look at the diagram below, a pentagon and a dotted line are drawn in the grid. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit further so we can see the other bits. Okay, so a pentagon, above, uh, pentagon shown above is reflected in the dotted line. One of the three pentagons below is the correct reflection. Draw a circle around the correct reflection. So if this here pentagon was reflected along this mirror line, which one of these would be the correct reflection? Now, if you look at this first one, it's not the correct reflection because it actually goes across three and down two here, whereas this only goes across two and down one. So it's not that one there. Now, it's between one of these last two. So I'm just going to move it up a bit further so we can see. So if we look here, we're trying to get everything matched up. So this is one away. So if I count in here, I've got one, two, three, four away. This is one, two, three, four ways. So those points match up actually. Now this is one, two, three, four, five, six away. So this needs to be six. One, two, three, four, five. That's actually only five away. So this one here isn't the reflection either. And then just to show you, so we've got this point here, which is one, two, three, four away. One, two, three, four away. This here point, one, two, three, four, five, six away, one, two, three, four, five, six away, that matches, and then this one here is the two back, so this is the one that would need to be circled, because this is the correct reflection, now if you circled the whole thing, or if you circled this one, that is fine, but that comes up every now and in the, a in the AQ, and it's important to be able to understand how to answer it, okay, number five, a map has the following scale, so 2 centimetres equals 7 kilometres. Two towns are 9 centimetres apart on the map. What is the actual distance between the towns? 
Okay, so here we've got two centimeters equals seven kilometers. Put down what the ratio is. Now we need to work out what it would be if it was nine centimeters. So nine centimeters is here. So basically what we need to do is we need to turn two centimeters into nine centimeters. So what we're gonna to have to do is turn it into one centimeter first. So one centimeter equals 3.5 kilometers because I half this, so I divided this by two, which means I have to divide this by two. Now I can get from one to nine really easily. All I do is I times by nine, which is what I'm gonna to have to do to this side as well to find out the ratio with the comparison. So it's 3.5 times by nine so five times nine is 45 and then five times three is 27 add it to the four is 31 not forgetting our one decimal place one decimal place so this would actually be 31.5 kilometers okay so use the ratio find out what one kilometer would be and then times that by nine now Use the scale in question five. So we've got two centimeters equals seven kilometers. Two car parks are 43.4 kilometers apart. How far apart are the car parks on the map? Okay, so again, we've got our two centimeters equals seven kilometers. But we need to get to 43.4 kilometers. So 43.4 kilometers. So what have we done to turn seven into 43.4? So what we have to do is divide this by seven to see what has actually happened to it. So seven into four doesn't go, seven into 43 goes six times, carry the one, and then seven into 14 goes two. So what's actually happened has been times by 6.2, which means on the map, we would need to times the two centimeters by the 6.2 as well. So 6.2 times by two, two times two is four, two times six is 12. Not forgetting our one decimal place, so this would be 12.4 centimeters, okay? So on the map, it's 12.4 centimeters, which would equal the 43.4. So our answer here would be 12.4. Number seven, Gemma is picking up her sons from school. It takes her a mean average time of 12 minutes to get to school and back home. But lower the time she's taken so far this week. How long does it take her to pick up the boys and return home on Friday? if the mean average for the week is 12 minutes. Okay, so this is what I class as the inverse mean. So normally for the mean, what we do is we add all the numbers together and then we divide by the number of numbers that are there and that would give us our answer. So in this instance, we would add all this together and we would divide by one, two, three, four, five. And that then would actually equal, and we've been given the answer, the mean, that would equal 12. But what we need to do is we need to do the opposite. So the way the, the best thing to do is to actually write this out as if you've done it and then to treat it like a function machine and go back through to find out what the missing number would be. So here what we did is we added them all together, we divided by five and then we got 12. So we're gonna go back through as if it was a function machine. So 12, we're not going to divide by five, we're gonna do the opposite, we're gonna times by five. So 12 times by five will give me 60. Now I need to do the opposite to adding, I need to take away. But what do I need to take away? I basically need to take away all of these from the 60. And then that'll leave us with the missing one. So it will. So we'll add together what we've got. So the 13 added to 11 is 24. The 13 added to the 12 is 25. If I add those two together, it gives me 49. And I need to subtract that because I added them all together. I need to do the opposite. So I'm subtracting 49 from the 60, and that'll leave us with the missing number. So zero, take away nine, we cannot do. Borrow, 10, take away nine is one. Five, take away four is one. So the missing number here will be 11. So treat it like a function machine. You've added and divided, and it's giving the answer of 12. So you need to times by five and then take away, and that'll leave you with the original number that was missing at the start. So 11 will be the answer there. And then look again at the times in question seven. So we've got all the times, including Fridays. What is the range of the times? So the range is just the biggest number, take away the smallest number. So it's 13, take away 11, which would equal two. So that there is something I think that's gonna come up because lots of people know how to add and divide, whereas doing the reverse, it's a skill that you definitely need to practice. So we've got our first poem. 
So, happiness. There's just no accounting for happiness, or the way it turns up like a prodigal son, who comes back to the dust at your feet, having squandered a fortune far away. How, and how can you not forgive? You make a feast in honour of what was lost, and take from its place the finest garment, which you saved for an occasion you could not imagine, and you weep night and day, to know that you were not abandoned, that happiness saved its most extreme form for you alone. No, happiness is the uncle you never knew about, who flies swiftly, a single engine plane, onto the grassy landing strip, hitchhikes into town and inquires at every door until he finds you asleep mid-afternoon, as you so often are during the unmerciful hours of your despair. It comes to the lover, to the dog chewing a sock, to the pusher, to the basket maker and to the clerk stacking cans of carrots in the night. It even comes to the boulder in the perpetual shade of pine barns, to rain falling on the open sea, to the wine glass weary of holding wine. So that was written by Jane Kenyon. So we've got our number uh, nine. So look at verse one of the poem. So it'll direct you to where to look. We don't need to look anywhere apart from verse 1. Find the word in verse 1 of the poem that means wasted. So with this, it's important to make sure that we've got the right verses. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So verse 1, a word that means wasted. And the word you're actually looking for is squandered. That means to waste as well. So squandered. So number 10, take the statement below that best describes the poem. Happiness is a poem about forgiving to achieve happiness. It doesn't really talk about that. All the places happiness can turn up and never giving up on happiness. It's actually the second one. All the places it can turn up because it talks about it can come to the boulder, it can come to the wine glass, it can come to all those places. And it's important that we've actually read the poem because that gives us an indication of how we can answer that. If you're not sure on these, never leave these blank. Always give it a tick, okay? Number 11. Look at verse 5. So we're directed straight to verse 5 of the poem. Which word in verse 5 of the poem means never ending? Okay, so verse 5, never ending. So the last one here. And it's actually perpetual. Perpetual means to never end. So it goes on forever and ever and ever. Perpetual. Okay. Number 12 comes up in every single AQ paper, this little box. So the words dust, make, grassy and swiftly are used in the poem. Tick the correct box to show whether each word is a noun verb, adverb or adjective. So if you're not sure on one, leave it and do this by process of elimination. So we've got our LY, which always indicates nearly, always I should say, adverb. Okay. Then we've got our grassy. I'm going to put that as our adjective. And then make is a verb, it's something that you do. And finally, dust in this instance is a noun. Only put one tick in each comma. Okay. Number 13. Look at the two lines below taken from verse 2. You make a feast in honour of what was last and take from it its place the finest garment. So write the two verbs from the list, from the lines above in the spaces below. So we need to write two verbs that are in these two lines. So a verb is a doing word. So you make would be one. So make is a verb. And finally, take. Take is something you do. So verb, your doing word or action. And that was what it would be. Now, number 14. Look at verse five. So again, we're back at verse five. Name three things that happiness comes to. Write the names of each in the spaces below. So three things that happiness comes to in verse five it even comes to the boulder so happiness even comes to the boulder so that's the first one in the perpetual shade of the pine barns to rain there you go so it comes to the rain as well on the open sea and finally to the wine glass weary of holding wine so boulder rain and wine glass is the three words that happiness comes to so boulder rain and the wine glass okay number 15 in the poem the word carrots is used 
The word carrots is the plural of carrot. Write the plural of each of the words below in the space provided. Be careful with your spelling. So with this one, you have to get your spelling right. If it ever says, be careful with your spelling, and you get the spelling wrong, you won't get the mark. So just be careful. So dust. The easiest way to do this is I always write one and two. So one is, plur is the singular form, where there's only one, obviously. And then plural is two or more. So one dust, two dust. This just stays the same. It does not two dusts. One C, two C's. One foot, two feet. One garment, two garments. So garment is just something that you wear, basically. So that's an easy way to do it. One, and then say this in the sentence with one and two, and then that'll help you get that. So back to Maz in number 16. A carton of milk costs 68p. A loaf of bread costs one pound thirty. Ruth has ten pounds twelve to spend on milk and bread. She buys six cartons of milk. What is the largest number of loaves of bread she can now buy? Okay, so one carton of milk costs sixty-eight p, and she buys six. So we need to find out the cost for the milk first. So sixty-eight times by six. So eight times six is our forty-eight. Then six times six is thirty-six. Add four gives me forty. So she spends four pounds and eight p on the milk. So we need to subtract that from this to see how much money that she's got left to spend on the bread. So let's take away this. Two take away eight we cannot do. Twelve take away eight is four. Zero take away zero is zero. And then zero take away nothing we cannot do. Ten take away four is R6. So she's got six pounds and four P to spend on bread. Now a loaf of bread, one loaf of bread is one pound thirty. So we need to see how many 1.30s go into this. Easiest way to do this is just count up 1.30s. So 1.30, 2.60, 3.90, and then add a pound will be 4 pounds 90, and then add the 30p will be 5 pounds 20, and then 6 pounds 50, which would be too much. So she'll be able to buy 1, 2, 3, 4 loaves of bread. Number 17, there are 670 pupils in a school of these pupils 80 percent are female how many are male so we are not trying to find 80 percent here you could do 80 percent and take it away but there's so much time wasted doing that we want to work out the opposite percentage because we're looking for the males so the opposite percentage would be that we are actually looking for 20 percent because 20 percent of the school are males and we all know hopefully that 20% is the same as two tenths or one fifth. So with this, all you're basically doing is you're dividing by five or you're dividing by 10 and times them by two. I actually prefer using tenths because it's easier to divide by 10 and then double than dividing by five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two tenths of 670. So divide by the bottom times by the top. So 670 divided by 10 is 67. And then times that by 2 is just double this, which would be 134. Now, if you divided it by 5, that's absolutely fine as well. You'd still get the same answer of 134. But with this, always try to get the opposite percentage. Instead of doing the 80% and then taking away, you're doing two things there. Whereas here, I'm only doing one thing. Save you time, save you less calculations and errors as well. 18. Charlotte is facing northeast. She turns 135 degrees anti-clockwise. In which direction is she now facing? For this, draw out the compass points. It makes life so much easier. So we've got our north, south, east, west. Never eat shredded wheat. Whatever way you do it, naughty elephant, squirt water. But make sure you put everything in because it directs your brain towards the answer. Okay, so we're at northeast. So I circle northeast. I'm going 135 degrees anti-clockwise. So clockwise is the way the clock goes. Anti-clockwise is the other way. So I'm going this way. So 135 degrees. This is basically 45 less than 180. So 180 would be all the way around the southwest. But it's actually one before that. Or I could go 45, 45, 45, which is 135. Whatever way you do it. You need to end up at west and that will be your answer for number 18 but draw this it makes it so much easier for you 
19. Spencer thinks of a number. He subtracts 98 from it and then he divides it by 5. His answer is 51. What number did Spencer think of? So this is our function machine but in word form effectively. We need to just go back through the story or the words and do the opposite until we end up back at the number that Spencer started with. So we'll start at 51. We're going back through. Divide by 5. So we will do the opposite. We will times by 5. So 51 times 5 gives me 255 and then we we'll keep going back through this is subtract 98 so we actually need to add 98 so we'll just add 98 5 add 8 it gives me my 13 9 add 1 is 10 add 5 is 15 and then 2 add 1 is 3 so my answer here would be 353 so just treat it like a story going back through until you end up back with the number that Spencer started with Number 20, look at the numbers below, put them in the correct areas of the Venn diagram. So you've got cube numbers, square number, triangular number, and then obviously the intersections are where that might be both. So here you would have triangular and cubed, for example. Now, what the easiest thing I think to do for this is, we've only got numbers up to 16, so it's not massive. So I'm going to write down the numbers that relate to this and then just not beyond 16, so that then I can just slot them in easily. So cube numbers, you get 1, 8, and 27. I don't even need 27, I just need 1 and 8. Okay, so cube number is, remember, where you times the number by itself. So 1 times 1 times 1 would be 1. 2 times 2 times 2 would be 8, and so on. Your square numbers, so 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16. So I've got all the square numbers up to 16. Now triangular numbers, it'll be 1, and then I add 2, and then I add 3, then I add 4, then I add 5, and that's all the triangular numbers that I need. Now it's going to be super easy. So I'm looking at the number 4. I can see it's a square number, and it is nothing else. So it just goes in square numbers. Then I'll go with number 6. I can see it's just a triangular number and nothing else. Number 8, just a cube number. And then 15, it's a triangular number, and it is nothing else, so it'll pop in with triangular number and finally 16 it is just a square number okay now the fact that we've done this now it helps us with 21 as well look again at the venn diagram in question 20 can you think of a number between 0 and 30 that would go in the middle section of the van the venn diagram so we need a number that goes in here that is a cube number and that is also a square number that is also a triangular number and if you notice here there is one number that you've written in all three of your lists, which is this number here. Number one is a square, it's a cubed, and it's a triangular, which would go in the middle. So your answer would be one. Number 22, Ben goes to dinner with his three friends. The bill comes to £132.48. They, they split the bill equally. How much do they each pay? Lots of people here automatically assume that they need to divide by 3. However, that is not correct because it's Ben and his three friends. So all together, there's Ben, who's one person, three friends, which is obviously three friends. All together, there's four people that go to dinner. So we need to divide this by 4. So 4 into 1 doesn't go. 4 into 13 goes 3 times. Carry the 1. 4 into 12 goes 3, and then 4 into 4 goes once, and then 4 into 8 goes 2. So our answer will be £33.12p. and 12p. Just watch out for that. Number 23, Karis is running a race for charity. It involves four different stages. She's got a swim, a cycle, a row, and a run. Now, it says here we've got our, obviously, line graph below that represents the race. How long a minute did she have to stop for between each part of the race in total? Okay, so this first part is the swim. So she's swimming, she's swimming, she has to stop here. So she stops at 7.40, and then she stops here. And this is 7.45, so she's only stopped for five minutes. Then she's on the cycle, so she's going a bit quicker, cycle, 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 and then stop. She stops at 7.50, and then she starts again at 7.55. Again, another five minute stop. Now she's on for the row. So she's rowing, she's rowing, she's rowing, she slows down a bit, but then she stops. 
and she stops at 8.05 and then she starts again at 8.10. Again, another five minutes and then finally she's on for the run and she finishes the race here. So how long did she stop for in total? She stopped for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in total. So we're on to the five mistakes text. Now I'm not going to read this because you don't actually need to read it for this. But what you've got to be careful about is if it's a comma or uh, comma or a question mark. Make sure you read the sentence before and after to make sure it includes. Because sometimes the comma sits right in the end of the sentence. And if you don't read the sentence after you won't know it needs to be a comma. But everything else is just words you're looking for effectively. So. Each line of the passage is numbered. A word has been used incorrectly. I am going to stop reading here. As soon as it said a word has been used incorrectly, I know I'm looking for a homophone. Okay, a homophone is the word that uh, sounds the same but means different. And one other thing, I'm actually going to do what's called the bottom up technique. I'm going to start with the bottom number looking because the examiners normally put one of the last two numbers as the answer. So if you go from the bottom up, you'll get to the answer more often than not quicker. So I'm starting with 19, then going to 17. So homophone, start with 19. So I'm looking at 19, expect your check within 14 days of this letter. So that's all fine. Straight up to 17. Of the fair, so I expect a full refund of the fair. This is like the fun fair. The fair she's talking about is this fair. So it's 17. And also point at each word. You're not reading the sentences for understanding. You're just finding words. So with your pencil point at the words. And it draws your eye to it more to each individual word. And you'll be able to spot if there's a mistake. Now with this. With the pages being on opposite sides of the page. You're just going to read through a spelling error. I don't need to read it anymore. I know I'm looking for a spelling error. Now remember these numbers. 2, 6, 12, 18. So I write these beside here. So 2, 6, 12, 18. Put SP below. This stops me having to flick backwards and forwards between the pages. Okay, so I'm starting from the bottom. And I'm looking up. So 18. Spelling error. And the anxiety I suffered as a result of your inadequate service I shall. So it's not 18. Back up to 12. Engine that failed. We found our mistake. This should actually be failed as in ai okay so field is the answer so that's line 12 i go down i take it straight away i move straight on now a question mark is needed instead of a full stop i stop reading there i don't need to read anymore and i remember 3 8 14 16 so 3 8 14 16 so 3 8 14 16 question mark again starting from the bottom working my way up so start with 16 i'm enclosing my ticket for the journey i expect a full refund i'm with the question mark all you're looking for is a full stop. So is this a question? I'm looking for enclosing my ticket for the journey. No, it's not a question. So 14, I go straight to it. Right, there's the full stop. Is this, does this need to be a question mark? So I need to find the start of the sentence actually. Why is it that a company as large as yourself relies on such a, such dated equipment? That why means that this is actually a question all the way through. So I found the full stop. I read to the start of the sentence and I found my answer. So the answer is 14, should be 14. Now comma is missing. I don't need to read any more. Comma is missing. I remember 4, 9, 10, 15. 4, 9, 10, 15. 4, 9, 10, 15. And it's a comma. Now a comma is always things in a list. Again, I'm looking from the bottom up. So I'm going to start with 15. So it increases your responsibilities for the delay. So that's all fine. I'm looking at 10. This failure of the service, my anxiety was made worse by the lack of information. So that's fine. Notice the way I read to the next line as well, just in case the comma needed to go here, but it doesn't. Now nine, I was made to feel very distressed, anxious and scared. This is where our comma goes. Things in a list. So it's line nine, give it our tick and then move on. So an apostrophe is missing. We do not need to read any more. Missing apostrophe. 7, 11, 13, 16. So 7, 11, 13, 16. 13, 16. So a pos. Now apostrophe means for contractions like don't. For example, that might be missing. Or an S, which shows ownership of something. So again, bottom up, we'll start with 16. And you find it 
hopefully straight away I'm needs to be the apostrophe because the A has been taken out. So we'll go down, give that our tick, and we'll move straight on. That technique and the speed of getting through that will really, really help you going forward. And number 29, look at the shape below. What is the area of this shape? Give your answer in centimeter squares. Write your answer in the space below. Okay, so we've got here a trapezium. And just as a little note, a trapezium is a shape that has only got one set of parallel sides. Now this is an isosceles trapezium, so it means that the two sides are the same length as are the two angles. But what would the easiest way to do to work out the area of this would be to split it into three parts. Now we know this length here is 20. And we know the height of it is 20 as well. So we can work out the area of this middle part, which is 20 times 20, which gives us 400 centimeters. Now, we know the width of this triangle here is five because it's the same as that. So this is five and this is 20. So all we do to work out the area of the triangles, we need to half at some point. I'm gonna half here first and do 10 times five, which gives me 50. And this here triangle here is the same size because it's five across by 20 as well. So this one here will also be 20, I mean, sorry, 50. So we've got our 400 centimeter squares, our 50 centimeter squares, and our 50 centimeter squares. Pop them all together, gives you 500 centimeter squares. Number 30, in a shop, Claire buys five apples, 11 p, nine bananas, 21 p, eight mangoes, 1.10. How much change will she get from a 20 pound note in the shop? So we need to work out how much all of these costs. So five times 11 is 55 p. 9 times 21, so just do 9 times 21 quickly, it takes seconds. 1 times 9 is 9, one, 2 times 9 is 18, will be 1.89. And then 8 times 1.10 will be 8.80. So we'll add all these together, put my 8.80, 55p, and then 9 at 5 is 14. And then 8 at 8 is 16, add 1 gives me 17, add the 5 gives me 22. And then we've got eight, add two is 10, add one is 11. So she spent 11 pounds 24, which we need to then take away from the 20 pounds because that will give us our change. So zero take away four, we cannot do. So we're gonna go all the way across uh, and borrow. So one cross nine, one cross nine. 10 take away four is our six, nine take away two is seven. First decimal point, nine take away one is eight, and then one take away nothing, one is nothing. So it'll be eight pounds, 76. Number 31, Cooper is playing with some six sided dice. He rolls one of the dice. What is the probability he will roll a two or more? So on six sided dice, potentially you could get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So what's the probability you get a six or more? So this is gonna be out of six because there's six possible outcomes. So you could get a two, you could get a three, a four, a five, or a six. So there's five of those outcomes that he could potentially get. So it's five out of six. And if you notice here that there's one, two, three, four, five, six sections. So five, six of this line will actually be here. So this will be one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, and then five, six. So that's where the arrow would need to be marked. So five out of six, write it as a fraction, then relate that to the probability line. Number 32, on a day, the temperature in Greenland is minus 16 degrees and the temperature in Iran is 26 degrees. How much higher is the temperature in Iran than Greenland? Now, some of you will know that if one of these is a negative number, then you're just literally adding the two numbers together. However, if you don't, and why that basically works is, I'm gonna put the temperature up here. So it's 26 degrees in Iran. I'm going to put zero degrees Celsius here and then minus 16 here. So to find the difference between the two, so what do you add to minus 16 to get to zero? You would add 16. And then what do you add to 16 to get, sorry, zero to get to 26? You'd add 26. So to get from minus 16 up to 26, you've added 16 and then you've added 26. And that's why that works. So 26 add 16. Six add six is 12. And then well, two you add one add one give me my four so the difference between the temperatures would be 42 so that's how much higher it is now look at the cube look at the nets of the cubes below circle all the nets of the cubes that would fold to make a complete cube so this is tricky in some ways but 
if you remember, if you've got four in a row with one either side, and it doesn't matter where on either side, as long as there's one either side, that will always make a cube. And we've actually got two of those because we've got the four in a row and then we've got one either side here. This here, unfortunately, this wouldn't make a cube because this would be a side, this would be a side, and then event what would end up happening is this would overlap with something. And this here doesn't work either. If you need to practice just looking at the different nets and doing that, it is something that comes up. But definitely get an idea of what works. Also, just on a as a teaching point, steps on a cube always work as well. So this here where it goes like steps, that there would fold to make a complete cube as well. So the two common ones are your steps and the four in a row with one either side. Okay. Number 34, what is 12 a.m. as 24 hour clock time? This catches a lot of people out. So the answer here wouldn't be 24.00, but it would actually be 00.00. This is basically when the 24 hour clock starts again. So that would be our answer. And we don't need the a.m. or p.m. on this because it's 24 hour clock. Number 35, look at the four shapes below. What is the total of all the angles in the straight line? quadrilateral, right angle, and the triangle. So straight line's 180 degrees, quadrilateral, which is four side shape, is 360 degrees, right angle's 90 degrees, and our triangle will be 180 degrees. So we just need to add all these together. So 180 add 180 will give us 360. I've already got 360 there, so, and then the 90. And if I just add all these together, that will give me my answer. So six add six is 12, add nine is 21. 3 at 3 is 6 at 2 is 8. So my answer will be 810. Now, number 36. Dividing a number by 10 and then multiplying the answer by 100 is the same as. Tick the correct answer below. Now, this looks tricky, but it's actually really straightforward. So you just write down what you've been given. So you're dividing by 10. I'm just going to write that down. Divide by 10. And then you've got multiply by 1,000. Again, just write that down. 1,000. Now, all we do is a divide cancels out a times. So what happens is, is I'm going to cancel out the divide by 10, which cancels out one of the multiply by 10s. And all you're left with is this here. And this is basically your answer. So when you've cancelled it out, see what you're left with, and that gives you the answer. So times by 100 is your answer. So multiply the number by 100. Second poem. The soul of a wild fox. She embodied the soul of an untamed fox through the facade of her decorous demeanour. Her intrepid brown eyes secrets revealed. Her burning red hair was strained in a chignon, but I wish I knew it wasn't meant to, meant to tamed, for it belonged on the damp forest soil, gliding through the coarse trunks like the fiery fur of a slick old fox. But I was the foolish one to think I could tame her, for I couldn't. She w she like the wild one she always was. Ripped out my heart with her pointy, jagged teeth and devoured it and left me to die a meek prey. So, that was written by Oshiki. And just as a teacher point, a shignan, I actually didn't know what that was. It's actually just a plait in, in a hair, so it's like... The hair has been like plaited in a special way. So number 37. Find the words in the poem which are closest in meaning to each of the words below. The answer sure you're looking for can all be found from line 5 to line 10 in the poem. Right, your chosen words in the space provided. So we need to find another word between line 5 and 10. That means wet. So line 1. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's between this line and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's between these two lines. So a word that means wet, it's actually this word damp. So if something's damp, it means it's wet. Okay, the second one, we're looking for a word that means gentle. And it's actually tame. If something's tame, it means that it's gentle. And then stupid, you'll probably see it up here, foolish. So those would be the three words that you would be after. Number 38, where is the fox's natural habitat in the poem? So hopefully you spotted that, talking about the forest and running around the forest, but that would be the answer. I'll just see if I can find it. 
quickly. The damp forest soil, where it belonged on the damp forest soil. If you put damp forest soil, that would be fine, but the answer would be forest. So, number 39, look at the three pairs of words highlighted in the short passage below. In each pair, only one of the words is spelled correctly. Circle the correct spelling for each pair of words. So the poem is about the spirit of a fox and how it is not easy. So easy would be spelt that way. So that's one of the circle to control. It talks about how the fox moves gracefully. So gracefully actually needs the E in it and the F-U-L-L-Y. And how the fox will attack its prey. So this is the correct prey in this instance. This is a correct spelling, but not for this actual text. So... Number 40, the word strained is used in the fourth line of the poem. The present tense of strained is strain. Write the present tense of the following words in the spaces below. So strained is our past tense. So this is yesterday. Yesterday, I strained today. That's what we want. It happening right now. We want the present. Yesterday, I tamed. Today, I tame. Yesterday, I ripped. Today, I rip. Yesterday I devoured, Yesterday, today I devour. No. Number 41, which five word phrase from the poem is similar in meaning to running around the rough trees? So five word phrase in the poem. So I have to look in the whole poem. It's not too big, so it's not too bad. And it's actually this word in line seven, gliding through the coarse trunks. Coarse means uh, rough and trunks is like the tree trunks. So gliding through the coarse trunks trunks is our answer so gliding through the c o a r course trunks now 42 look at the first four lines of the poem find the word that is similar in meaning to attitude so first four lines of the poem a word that is similar in meaning to attitude and it's actually this one here demeanor okay so demeanor is basically your attitude so we need to pop that in so we got the mean r o u r and 43 the words two two and two sound the same but are used differently so they're homophones effectively in the two sentences below Ruth and Grace are discussing a trip to the cinema. Complete each sentence by writing the word two, two or two in each of the blank spaces. So we need to make sure that we use the right one. So I'm going to the cinema. Two, just T-O, to watch two movies, as in one, two, the number two. Do you want to come? Asked Ruth. No, not really. It is too warm. So it's too warm, too hard, too cold. That's when you add on the double O. Okay, so that would be your answer for that one. Back to Maz, number 44. Plot the following coordinates on the grid below. What is the name of the quadrilateral that is created by joining the coordinates? So plot them first. So we always go along and then we go up first. So along the corridor, up the stairs, or crawl before you can walk whatever way you remember it. So we go across the three and up to one. Then we go across the five and up to four, five, Four, and then we've got ten, four, so ten, four, and then finally eight, one will be this one here. If we join these up as neatly as we can, what type of shape have we got? We've actually got a parallelogram. It's not a rhombus because a rhombus all the sides are the same length, whereas this one. These two sides are the same length and these two sides are the same length. So your parallelograms like your pushed over rectangle. So your rhombus, all the sides would have to be the same length. And question 45. Joseph is having a party. He has bought 7.28 litres of water. Each cup holds 200 millilitres of water. How many full cups? That's important. Can he fill during the party? Write your answer in the space below. So... What we've got to do is the easiest way to do this is how many 200 milliliters fit into one liter. Now that's five. So effectively what we've done to 200 to turn it into one liter is we've times by five. So that's all we're really going to have to do in this question. We just do 7.28 times by five. That'll tell us how many full cups he can have. 
So 8 times 5 is our 40, and then 5 times 2 plus our 4 is 14, and then carry the 1, and then 5 times 7 is 35 plus 1 is 36. Not forgetting the two decimal points, 1, 2, 1, 2. So it says here full cups. So we cannot include the 0.4 because that's only 0.4 of a cup. It's not a full cup. So full cups in this instance will be 36 full cups. Number 46. Look at the question below. Which letter has the smallest value? Tick the letter below. So here we've got 12 plus A equals 20. So we need to do the inverse. We're going to do 20. Take away 12 which is 8. So A here would equal 8. Now here we've got b divided by 4 equals 5, so we're going to do the inverse, so we'll do 4 times 5, which is 20, so b equals 20. And then finally, 36, sorry, 4 times c equals 36, so we'll do our inverse, 36 divided by 4 equals 9, so c would equal 9. So the one that's equal to the smallest is a. Number 47, a ball is dropped from a height of 364 centimetres. The ball always bounces up to the same height of four sevenths of its original height. How high does it bounce on its first bounce? So effectively all we're doing is four sevenths of 364. So we're dividing by the bottom times and by the top. So 364 divided by seven gives me, does it go 36 goes five times carry the one, seven into 14 goes twice. And then I do 52 times by 4. So times and by, divide by the bottom, times by the top. So 2 times 4 is 8. 4, four times 5 is 20. So the answer here would be 208 centimetres on its first point. Now, the same ball is dropped again, but this time from a different height. It reaches a height of 244 centimetres on its first point. What height was it dropped from? So what we're actually doing here is we're doing the opposite. We need to do the inverse. So instead of this being 4 sevenths of 244, this is actually 4 sevenths equals 244. So we need to use this fact to then find the original height that it was dropped from. And again, I said it before, we need to do the opposite to find out what it will be. So here, we divide it by the bottom and we times by the top. We need to do the opposite, so we're actually going to divide by the top and times by the bottom. So, if we divide by the top, what that effectively does is it tells us what 1 seventh is. And then when we've got the, what 1 seventh is, we can times that by 7 to give us 7 sevenths, which is the whole. So I'll go through that now. So we're going to divide by the top and then times by the bottom. So 244 divided by 4 gives me 61. So what this it means is 61 is equal to 1 seventh. Now we need to times that by 7. And that will give us what 7 sevenths is, which is a whole. So 7 times 1 is 7. 6 times 7 is 42. So the original height would have been 427 centimetres. Because 1 seventh times by 7 gives you 7 sevenths, which would be the whole original height. So if you're asked to find out the original number... We need to do the inverse, we need to do the opposite. Divide by the top and times by the bottom. Number 49, look at the patterns below. They are formed from square tiles. The length of one side of a square tile is three centimeters. That's really important. What is the perimeter of pattern two? A couple of ways you can do this. I think the easiest way is just counting the number of sides. So one, for perimeter we count all the sides. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. But 1 is equal to 3, so 10 will be equal to 30 centimetres. Now, how much longer is the perimeter of pattern 3 than pattern 1? So pattern 3, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Times that by 3, so pattern 3 has a perimeter of 36. Pattern 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So we need to find the difference between the two. So 36 minus our 24 will leave us with 12. Now, final maths question. Each half of a rugby match lasts 40 minutes. The halftime break lasts 10 minutes. Extra time is added for delays. The rugby match starts at 15.05 and 
and finishes at 1641. How much extra time was added? Give your answer in minutes. Okay, so we've got one half last 40 minutes. We've got half time break the last 10 minutes and the other half will obviously last 40 minutes as well. So we'll add together how long in theory it should take without any injury time. So add all these together and it gives us 90 minutes. Now 90 minutes is the same as an hour and a half. Okay, so or an hour and 30 minutes I should probably put. So I need to add on that to this time here. So I'm going to do my timeline. So I'm at 15.05. I'm going to add on the R plus 1R. Gives me to uh, 16.05. And now I'm going to add on the 30 minutes. Which takes me to 16.35. And then it actually finished at 16.41. So 16.41 is when it finishes here. So what else have I added on? How much extra time has been added on? So what have I done to get from 1635 to 1641? I've actually added six minutes and that there is the extra time that will have been added. Okay. Now if we've got our final comprehension text. So when Mary Lennox was sent to Misselwaith Manor to live with her uncle, everybody said she was the most disagreeable looking child ever seen. It was true too. She had a little thin face and a thin little thin body, thin light hair and a sour expression. Her hair was yellow and her face was yellow because she had been born in India and had always been ill in one way or another. Her father had held a position under the English government and had always been busy and ill himself. And her mother had been a great beauty who cared only to go to parties and amuse herself with gay people. She had not wanted a little girl at all. And when Mary was born, she handed her over to her care of Aya, who was made to understand that if she wished to please Mem Sheba, she must keep the child out of sight as much as possible. So when she was sickly, so when she was a sickly, fretful, ugly little baby, she was kept out of the way. And when she was when she became a sickly, fretly, fretful, toddling thing, she was kept out of the way also. She never remembered seeing familiarly anything but the dark face of her Ayla and the other native servants. And as they always obeyed her and gave her her own way in everything because Mem Sheep would be angry if she was disturbed by her crying. By the time she was six years old, she was a tyrannical and selfish little pig. The young English governess who came to teach her to read and write disliked her so much that she gave up her place in three months. And when other governesses came to try and fill it, they always went away in a shorter time than the first one. So if Mary had not chosen really to want to know how to read books, she would never have learned her letters at all. So that's from our Se The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. So we've got our questions that relate to this text. So find the phrase of four words or more in the first paragraph, which is closest to meaning to the ugly baby. So hopefully you remember actually reading it. So four words or more talks about the ugly baby. And it's actually here, the most disagreeable looking child ever seen. So if you've got any of this, but it must have most disagreeable looking child in it. But you can have a little bit extra if you need. So most, dis most disagreeable looking child so most disagreeable looking child now number 53 look at paragraph 2 find the word in the paragraph closest in meaning to the feeling or express feeling or expressing irritation so paragraph 2 feeling or expressing irritation and it's actually twice it comes up it's fretful so fretful just means, like it says, you're irritated. Fretful. Number 54, the following words appear in the text. Position, people, parties, place. Write these in alphabetical order below. So just looking at, they all begin with P. So but then we need to look at the second letter, which is an A. So the first word would be parties. Then it would be E, because E comes next in the alphabet. So we've got people, and then we've got L comes next, which would be place, and then finally we are left with position. 
Number 55, look at paragraph 3. In paragraph 3, a simile is used. Now, a simile is whenever you use the words like or as to describe something as something else. So you're comparing it to something else. So write the simile below. So we're looking paragraph 3. The simile has been used. And if you look here, she was selfish like a little pig. So it's comparing her to a little pig. So like a little pig. If you've added selfish like a little pig, that's fine as well. But you must have like a little pig in your answer. Number 56. The word familiarly is used in the passage. This is an adverb. Write the adverb that can be made using the following words. Write your answers in the spaces below and be careful with your spelling. So we've got incredible. To turn that into an adverb with these, always think about adding ly on the end. So this would be incredibly. Ly on the end, not your adverb. So quick would become quickly. And then haste would become hastily. You need that I-L-Y in the end of that one. Number 57. Based on what you've read in the whole passage, tick the statements below that are true and put a cross beside the statements that are false. So, the young governess, the young English governess gave up teaching Mary after three weeks. That is actually false. So, put a cross because it was actually after three months and she gave up. Mary and her father were always sick. Yeah, it talks about them being sick all the time as a youngster. Mary's father worked for the British government. Yes, it talked about that in paragraph one. And Daya didn't look after Mary growing up. That's false. She is actually the only person that really looked after. So you'd have X cross, sorry, X, tick, tick, cross. And then that it would be your answers for that. Now for the final question, 58. Look at the four words below. Based on your reading of the passage, which word best describes Mary? So hopefully you've managed to get this from the text. She's not a jolly young girl. She's not scared. She's not angry. She's just very spoiled. And that is the end of the paper.